Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> but enough about me. John Baptiste won five Grammys last night. Five! Come on, guys! Come on. Guys, that's... That's... I, we know that, dude. That's our friend from work. That's... Now, John's not here tonight. Uh, he's, he's on his way back. He's on his way back. He's still in airport security in Los Angeles explaining the five Grammy-shaped bulges in his pants. <laughs> but he is represented up there in our dome this evening, right there. Yeah! yeah. Deep! John took home uh, trophies for, let's see, uh, Best Music Video, Woo! Best American Roots Performance, Best American Roots Song, Best Score Soundtrack for Soul, and Woo! The Whole Enchilada, Album of the Year. <laughs> album of the Year. Whole year. One album. Whole year. January to December. Calendar, fiscal, the whole thing. We Are, of course, the album's full name is We Are Gonna Win a Buttload of Grammys. <laughs> I'm, I'm not surprised at all yeah. that John won Album of the Year. It doesn't, surpri doesn't surprise me at all. You know who was surprised? John. <laughs> Take a look. And the Grammy goes to... We Are... John Baptiste! You can tell he didn't expect to go on stage because he wore his most casual rhinestone bishop's vestments. <laughs> the Pope needs to borrow his outfits. John's acceptance speech was incredibly moving. Here's how he kicked it off. You know, I, I, I really, I believe this to my core. There is no best musician, best artist, best dancer, best actor. That's true. But there is a best album, and it's We Are <laughs> by John Baptiste. John also, John also took a moment to talk about the role music has played in his life. I love music. I've been playing since I was a little boy. I, I, it's more than entertainment for me. It's a spiritual practice. That is lovely. Also, I'd like to apologize to John for interrupting his spiritual practice for years with jokes about Rudy Giuliani's wine-soaked buffoonery. <laughs> and even though John won, he actually gave the audience an incredible prize, this performance of his song, Freedom. I move my body to like this. I can't believe I get a front row seat to that show every night. <laughs> right there. That's this, this right there. That's it. Front row seat. I also can't believe I have to pay a scalper $600 for that seat. <laughs> John ended the song by heading to the audience to dance on Billie Eilish's table. He does it all. He writes, he arranges, he sings, he dances. And right after the camera cut away, he made Billie Eilish some tableside guac. So <laughs> unbelievably fresh. <laughs> What's that thing called? The uh, machotle? The machotle? Or whatever. John wasn't the only winner at the Grammys. He was, it was also a huge night for 19-year-old pop sensation Olivia Rodrigo, who won three Grammys, including one for Best New Artist, but... As she was walking the red carpet, she accidentally dropped one of them and broke it. Oh. Now she has to buy it. Those are the rules. <laughs> That's what it says on the bottom. One powerful moment was when Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made an appearance and called on the artists there to support Ukraine. The world, what's more opposite to music? Feel the silence with your music. Feel it today to tell our story. Adding, but not you, Kanye. We're dealing with enough already. <laughs> Thank, thank you, though. Thank you. 
Zelensky's Grammy appearance comes at a critical time for his country. Russia has almost completely pulled back from the area around Kyiv. And now that they're gone, <laughs> yeah, that is good news. That is good news, admittedly. That's good news, but now that they've pulled out, the world is getting a close look at the horrific path of destruction the Russians have left behind. And I'm not gonna show you any of the footage because it's not safe for humans, but it's all over cable news if you wanna, if you wanna go and, and find out what I'm talking about. Ukrainian officials describe what they found there as genocide and have launched an investigation into possible Russian war crimes. I'm gonna save uh, everybody some time and pull the possible out of that sentence. It's for sure war crimes. Investigation done. It's, it's settled. Let's, let's move on to something less obvious, like figuring out if a bear poops in the woods. Of course, if it's a Russian bear, they call it a special military defecation. <laughs> There's one thorny issue with the war crimes issue. To hold a country responsible for war crimes, you might want to go through the UN Security Council, but as one of five permanent members, Russia would have veto power over any decision. That's insane. That's like if the Avengers consisted of Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Russia. <laughs> While the world waits for Russia to be held accountable, the people of Ukraine continue to defend their country in surprising ways. Remember that, um, that stalled, how long was it? It's like a 40 mile long Russian convoy of tanks and, and military equipment that was coming down from Belarus at the beginning of the war. Well, it was gonna go down, it was gonna circle Kiev, end of story, and it never happened. And there was a lot of speculation about why the convoy stopped. Were they bogged down in the mud? Did they run out of fuel? Did they get caught in the left turn lane in Home Depot just past the Arby's on Maple Street? <laughs> you don't see the turn only arrow till you're right at the light and then you're screwed because you can't shift over. <laughs> Well, it turns out Ukrainians stopped the convoy through a series of night ambushes carried out by a team of special forces and drone operators on quad bikes, which began eight years ago as a group of volunteer IT specialists and hobbyists designing their own machines. <laughs> Holy cow. That is... Yes. Ukraine is stopping Putin by tapping into their most precious resource, bored dads. <laughs> Who's laughing about my drone-making hobby now, huh? <laughs> Next, I'm gonna defeat the whole Russian brigade using only my elaborate model train set and my collection of empty hot sauce bottles. <laughs> hey, Ivan, eat ghost pepper ass blaster. <laughs> How about some habanero colon killer? <laughs> See, dads finish the sauces and they wash the bottles and they put a little shelf in their workroom. <laughs> Ukrainian resistance isn't just in the sky, it's also in the kitchen. Because Russian troops are getting poisoned food from Ukrainian residents. Well, yeah. <laughs> How you like them apples, Russia? And by the way, would you like an apple? <laughs> Ukrainians know that Russians are coming into their homes to loot, so they're taunting the Russians by leaving behind notes reading, guess where the poison is? <laughs> Damn, that is cold. You'd think the Russians would be good at that. It is their most popular board game. <laughs> wow. In addition, some 500 Russian troops have also become ill from alcohol poisoning of unknown origin. Now, I'm no doctor, but I'm gonna guess the origin of alcohol poisoning is alcohol. <laughs> And how does a Russian get alcohol poisoning? Vodka is the top of the Russian food pyramid. <laughs> the rest is potato. <laughs> and... Yeah. Is potato. Is potato. <laughs> is potato. <laughs> uh, in COVID news, uh, certain people are now eligible for another booster, those of us 50 and older. Some folks are going overboard because a German man got 90 COVID shots. Almost got away with it, but the German authorities grew suspicious when the man presented his vaccine card. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Shaquille O'Neal and Miami.